So we're carrying on in the series on the armor of God and today we're going to look at the breastplate of righteousness is part number three in a series of uh, teachings uh, meant to equip you in spiritual warfare. So Holy Spirit, I just ask today that you open the hearts of every person here to receive truth in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Guys, I want to just share this with you again. It's not a Sunday school teaching. Um, this is meaty stuff. This is meant to equip you and empower you in the Holy Spirit, in the grace of God, in the love of God, in the truth of Jesus Christ. It is to empower you, to give you the tools and the equipment you need to overcome, to live a blessed, prosperous, abundant life that's going to attract other people. You know, we are called to be the aroma of, of Christ we're called to be the salt of the earth that means where people like look at our lives they, they they've got to see something different we've got to see the the glory of God being reflected in us and through our lives that is what Christianity is about it's about a new life in Christ it's about an abundant life in Christ not it's not about a future existence in heaven I mean that's that's obviously part of uh, the gift of eternal life but it's about reigning and ruling now on the earth. And so we're looking at this, um, the armor of God uh, from Ephesians 6.13. You can check it out in your Bible. You can read through it. It's in the context of spiritual warfare, as we said. And uh, today we're looking at the second piece of the armor. The first teaching was, or sorry, the second part of the series. The first part of the armor is the belt of truth. Just to recap from last uh, week's teaching, the belt of truth truth is based totally on Jesus Christ and the finished work of the cross oh it's such good news <laughs> but these are truths so everything the belt of truth held everything together and the main thing it held on the front of us for our protection of our vital inner being was the breastplate of righteousness so a breastplate was a piece of armor so it would it would fit here over your over the front of you here to protect your vital organs so again, these are spiritual things. These are it's it's a spiritual truth. Paul was using the armor of a Roman soldier as an analogy of spiritual truth that we need to take on. And the spiritual truth that you need to take on today that's going to be life-changing for you is an understanding of your righteousness in Christ Jesus, an understanding of what righteousness means and what it is and how it's uh, imparted to you by the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ. So the breastplate of righteousness. Now, if you look at a breastplate, it covers your heart. And, and the heart in a Judo-Christian sense of understanding is the inner spiritual being of a person. So the purpose of righteousness is to cover. It's a, it's, it's a vital piece of armor to cover your inner being, to cover your heart, to guard your heart. So righteousness is a heartfelt thing. Okay, and it's used, a breastplate of righteousness, like in warfare, we use it to advance against the enemy. You know, it's not, we don't have a breastplate on, on our backs. We have it on our front so that we can take, we can move forward, advancing against the enemy, taking back that which has been stolen from us and overcoming. So it, it is an active part of armor so that we don't we're not afraid we're not afraid that our inner being is going to be touched because it's protected by righteousness so it's for victory and for warfare and these things as i said have been fleshed out over years in my life these are practical teachings so what you need to do is establish yourself in an understanding of the righteousness that comes through christ so the first thing is is that i can probably many of you are saying well I've read that word in the Bible many times, like what actually is righteousness? So the first part of taking on this army is understanding what righteousness is. And let me just say that righteousness under the old covenant and righteousness under the new covenant mean slightly two different things. But please remember we are new covenant people. Okay, we are people that uh, um, have come been born again into a new covenant in Christ Jesus because of the finished work of the cross. We are under grace. We are not under the old covenant law. So when we look at righteousness, we want to look at it from a 
after the cross perspective what does it mean after the cross to be uh, to be righteous so i just want to uh, we're going to explore that just now but righteousness basically means your right standing with god or, or to be in a right place with god to be in, in a, a right position with god we'll look at that more just now but even in the old covenant before the law of moses was given um Abraham was considered righteous. Now, Abraham is the man of faith. He's the father of the faithful. He's the father of those who are born again. So um, it's about righteousness is not about right doing. It's about right believing that leads to right doing. So under the new covenant and Abraham, even though he was in the Old Testament, he understood this. It says Abraham believed God. And it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, this was before the law of Moses was given. Before the law of Moses was given, there was a man called Abraham. And we are his spiritual offspring. And it says he believed God. And that was credited to him as righteousness. That's what the scriptures say. It talks about it in Romans 4, 3 in the New Covenant. It takes it up and says Abraham is actually the father so, of, the, of the faithful. So, guys, we have a heavenly father. God's our heavenly father. We are children of God. But actually, you know, it also says we are sons and daughters of Abraham, the man of faith, the man that believed God, didn't work for his righteousness. He believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. So we are Abraham's offspring. And, you, you know, I encourage you, I think it's uh, Genesis 10 to 15. It's all about Abraham. He was amazing. Abraham and Sarah uh, were amazing. They were in their 80s. Abraham was 100 and he was having children. Um, everything he put his hand to prospered. Just amazing. He was, he was just so trusting in God. You see, he was a forerunner of the born-again believer. And Abraham met with Jesus, I believe, when he met a priest called Melchizedek. And they broke bread and drank wine together, symbol of the new covenant. And it says Abraham understood the gospel. The gospel was given to Abraham beforehand. So Abraham was the man of faith. He's our father. He is a father of many nations. It says, God says, I'm going to bless the nations through you, Abraham. So we need to like get into understanding who Abraham was and the way he lived. After Abraham. The Jews wanted to gain righteousness through works and they ended up with the law and that's not good news. But uh, Abraham wasn't interested in working for righteousness. He simply believed God. So Abraham did what was right because he understood he was righteous. So righteousness is the root, not the fruit of good works. So righteousness is the root of good works. In other words, when you understand you're righteous, you start doing right things. You start living right. When your heart is filled with righteousness of God, you start doing what is right. See, righteousness is the root of doing, living in a right way, living in a holy way. And Abraham understood this. He believed God's promises. He said, even though I'm 80 years of age, I believe your promise that I'm going to have a son. Sarah and myself are going to have a son <laughs> born of the promise oh can you believe that 80 i'm 64 and uh, i don't know about having kids now but but it's interesting the first son of the promise his name was isaac he who laughs <laughs> that's very prophetic but abraham is our father he's a father of those who are righteous by faith and it's all about god's grace it's a gift righteousness is a gift from god so we just want to just define righteousness a bit, a bit more like all armor. It's something you have to put on. It says in Ephesians chapter 6, put on the armor of God. So you have to decide to take this truth and put it onto your life. You have to choose to walk in the truth of the scriptures. And the scriptures say that for now a righteousness has been revealed that is by faith. Okay, in Jesus Christ, Romans 3.3. 3. So we have now a righteousness, a right standing with God. So what is that righteousness? Let's just look at it again. Righteousness is a state of being that is acceptable to God. So it means God looks at us and sees us to be in a right spiritual condition and state. 
Righteousness is a right relationship and right standing with God. What is that relationship God wants from you? That you are his child, that you depend on him, that you trust in him, that you have faith in his goodness, not in your own efforts. Righteousness is not obtained through doing good works. Under the Old Testament, even under Islam, under all religion, righteousness is works-based. It's like, hey, if I do good things, I'm going to get right. But what God says, actually in Romans 3, no one is righteous, no one is good enough. Everybody falls short. And that's why we need a different kind of righteousness. And it's a righteousness that comes by grace through believing in the finished work of the cross. So it's being in right standing with God. It's actually the word righteousness and justification go together. Again, kind of religious words in a, in a way. But righteousness just we mean, means right standing with God the Father. Justification means just as if you never sinned. So the truth that you've got to take on is that you are righteous because in God's eyes it's just as if you've never sinned. Because Jesus' blood shed on the cross has washed away your sins. It says this great exchange of the cross. It says 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says Jesus became, Jesus didn't have any sin, but he became sin so that we should become the righteousness of God in Christ. So you are righteous. I am righteous, not because of our efforts, but because Jesus imparted or imputed his righteousness to us. That's good news. <laughs> you don't have to work for it. It's a free gift. That's what grace, God's unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor is all about. And we're not under the law, we're under grace. So we actually are in right standing with God. That's why Hebrews 4 says you can approach the throne of grace boldly to ask for the help you need. Did you know that? You can, you can come to God boldly. Nothing separates. Your sin doesn't separate you anymore. Your, your sin is not an issue anymore. Except for you, sometimes you can suffer the consequences of bad choices, obviously. And this is not an excuse to sin. It's not a license to sin. But let me say, your relationship with God is not defined on your, on your actions anymore. It's defined on your belief. So righteousness is about believing Righteousness is about right believing, not about right doing. Okay, let me say that again. Righteousness is about right believing, not about right doing. Now, the, 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 the funny thing about that, when you believe right, you actually end up do, doing right. So please hear me. Righteousness leads to, leads to a right way of living. So you find yourself doing God's will and doing good things and uh, advancing the gospel just because you have this established in your heart. You are clean before, before God. So it says in 1 Corinthians 1.30 again, Jesus Christ has become our wisdom from God, our righteousness, holiness, and redemption. So your holiness, your righteousness, this truth that you need to put over your heart is not based on you doing like leading a sinless life. It's about you believing that you have been washed clean, that you're no longer a slave to sin. When you start believing that, you start living that. See, because as you believe, so you live out. If you believe you're a sinner, you're going to act like a sinner. If you believe you're righteous, I promise you, you will start living righteously. So your life is hidden in Christ. So when God looks at you, he sees you just like Jesus. He sees you perfected, holy, righteous. He sees you as a child of God. See, that's the gospel. Romans 1.16 says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is a power of God unto salvation for all who would believe, first for the Jew and then for the Gentile. For in the gospel, a righteousness is revealed that is about faith. You see, the whole gospel is about righteousness. It's actually about after the fall, we were not right with God. We, we didn't have relationship with God. We, mankind ran away from God. And the whole question was, how do we get right with God again? And Abraham got it. He said, I'm going to believe God is good. I'm going to believe God has the solution. And it was credited to him as righteousness. He believed the promises of God. He believed. He actually foresaw the coming of the Messiah that would make him righteous, Jesus Christ. And he actually met Jesus, I believe, in pre-incarnation of Jesus Christ. And the same for us, that we can get right with God 
by accepting the finished work of the cross, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior being born again. It's a free gift. It's such good news, guys. <laughs> That's how we get right with God, through Jesus. We become part of the body of Christ. You see, the big battle in life is between self-righteousness through works and righteousness through faith. You know, one day when I got saved, I, I, got, I, I became very religious, you know. I thought, okay, I'm saved by grace, but i got to maintain um, my salvation by good works. And you know, I, I, I became very judgmental of others. I became very critical of others. In fact, I became very self-righteous. I thought it was about what I did instead of depending on God's grace. And one day, I think it was about 2004, eight around there God said to me Gary you very self-righteous you think you're better than other people you think that you are right with me because of what you do and I was shocked I heard it so clearly and and the Lord said to me like you need to get into my grace and I said Lord how do I get onto that highway of grace that better place of living of grace you are merited favor and undeserved favor and he said to me the on-ramp the he gave me a vision. I was, it was like a highway of grace. And I saw an on-ramp and it said righteousness. You get on to grace, into grace living by understanding that you are right with God. And it took me years. It took me about four years of deeply studying righteousness and grace. And I realized the whole of scripture is actually about this clash between religious self-righteousness and grace-based righteousness that make us children of God and worthy to operate in his name. So Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified with Christ, I no longer live. See, we, we would die to self and be born again. The life I live in this body is by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and died for me. And it says, I do not set aside grace, for if righteousness could be obtained through religious law, Christ died for nothing. So the whole essence of righteousness is that Christ died that we should become right with the Father. And that's about the whole Bible is about this great exchange of the cross. That Jesus became sin. He took our sins. That's why he died on the cross. And he imputed to us in a, a spiritually, it's a spiritual mystery. But we who believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we who are born again, have become right so we need to renew our mind in in this identity again we need to replace lies saying hey you got to work for God you got to work for righteousness we know that Israel tried that for years and it says in the book of Romans they never achieved it they never achieved righteousness through works but he says what what, what we got to do is renew our minds and get into our minds and even deeper into our heart no matter what I do I am righteous with God. Now again, please hear me. It's not an excuse to sin. It's actually the power to overcome sin. So grace is the power to... to uh, Titus, uh, I think it's 2.12 says, For grace will empower me to overcome the lusts of the world. It's grace that empowers us to overcome sin. Romans 6.14, one of my favorite verses. We're not slaves to sin. We shall not be mastered by sin because we are under grace. And grace means the free gift of righteousness. Righteousness means it's just as if we've never sinned. So we need to move from a sin consciousness. Sadly, religion always wants to get us to focus on what we do wrong instead of what Jesus did for us on the cross and that we are right in Christ. So we need to shift our thinking. It's not about sin it's actually about righteousness i am a slave to righteousness i do by nature now what is right i want to tell you that i do not by nature sin my old sinful nature is dead i do not have a sinful nature any longer do i sin sometimes yes i do but grace covers that but let me tell you my heart is not for sin i have a new nature in my heart that's why i have to guard my heart when I get things wrong, the devil's going to come and accuse me and say, Hey, you're just a sinner. You're just useless. And I say, No, I'm righteous. My heart, my inner desire is to do God's will, the will of my Father, 
the, the, to do what is right. And I find myself doing what is right just naturally. It's like, it's like wow, you know, I want to do good things for the Lord. I want to bless others. I want to love others. I want to serve others. <laughs> I want to preach the gospel. <laughs> I, want, I, I just want to be kind and loving. I find myself doing that. So let me just, uh, let's finish off. It talks about weapons of righteousness. Again, we are in warfare. This whole thing is about you learning to overcome and walk in the abundant life of Jesus. So you need to take on this breastplate. And even now, as we come to this finish, I say, let me tell you something. God wants to bless you. So 3 John, verse 1 to 3. The old man, John, St. John was on Patmos and, and his prayer was for the saints. May you prosper and be healthy. God wants us to prosper. At the end of his life, John knew this. He, it was a prayer. And my prayer over you, may you prosper and be healthy. And even now, I just want to end by praying. And before I end by praying, just please hit the subscribe button, bottom right-hand corner of this video. Please share this video with your friends. Press like. Guys, this is, this is about getting the good news of Jesus out there. Share this with others. We have righteousness through the blood of Jesus. Earned for us on the cross, not by our works. But we are called to believe that. You are righteous. And I pray over you right now. In the name of Jesus, Father, I pray that you would touch every person's heart by the power of your Spirit. Remove religious self-righteousness in the name of Jesus I cast it down and I declare and you are righteous in Christ and not by works you have righteousness covering your heart now in the name of Jesus and you are blessed you can walk in the abundant life of Christ bless you share the good news